In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Web Starts as a complete marketing solution for your online marketing. The reason why Web Starts makes a complete marketing solution is because it's not only your website, but with Web Starts, you can also add a blog and a store to your site. So let's take a look at how to do that using Web Starts. Go to webstarts.com, click on Get Started, it's free. You can sign up at Web Starts for free. And the next step, choose a design. Now you can choose a design by category, and if you want, you can select that category by designs that feature a blog, or you can click on store, and that will show you designs that feature a store. Some of the designs already have a blog and a store implemented into them. So for example, if I click to preview this particular design, you'll see that not only does it have a store, but it also has a blog link and there. You can see that you can create blogs using that design. When you find a design you like, all you need to do is click get started and you'll be able to continue with the sign up process or just click on the select button and continue with the process. So now it's time to sign up. Just enter your name, your email address. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Verify that you're human. Okay, once you've signed up with your name, your email address and your password, it's time to choose a web address for your website. Now, if you're ready to go ahead and subscribe to a paid plan, then you can choose a top level domain name. So that would be like your very own .com, .net, .org, or any other one of these top level domain extensions. But if you're not convinced and you want to continue with just the free version of your Web Starts website, then you'll want to choose a .webstarts.com address. So for example, I'm going to call this Internet Dash Marketing 101 dot webstarts.com if you're not sure what you want to choose you can always click the choose later button and then you can choose your web address at a later time click continue when you're ready and you'll go to the next step and here you'll be welcomed with a video that walks you through some of the basic things that you need to know in order to use the web starts editor i'm going to go ahead and close that out so now I'm in my dashboard view, and from my dashboard view, I can hover over the thumbnail of, to my website and click the Edit Site button if I'm ready to jump in and start editing, but I want to call your attention down here to the app panels. Now, some of these apps, when enabled, or one of these apps that's enabled is the blog right now, and for that reason, it's blue, and if you wanted to enable the store app, you would just click on the store app, and then in a few moments, it will load up the store. And then you should see something like this and you can go ahead and start creating your products. But I want to show you that if you close that out, you'll now see that the store app panel is illuminated in blue. And that will happen for any of the apps that you activate within your Web Starts account. Let's jump in and start talking about how to create products if you're selling products and also how to create a blog and then how to tie all that in together in order to create one centralized hub for your internet marketing. One of the reasons why it's important to have a blog on your site is because Google and other search engines like a constant flow of fresh content. So by writing regularly scheduled blogs, Google will come to your website, crawl it, see that you're creating new content all the time, and then it should give you a little bit better ranking in the search engine when people search for keywords that have to do with your product, service, or business. So to get started with the blog app, I've just clicked on the blog panel, and it's really easy to create a new post. You just click the new post button, then you can add a title. That can be whatever you want. You can enter an author name for this demo. I'm just going to enter my name. And then here, I want to call attention to the publish date. You can schedule to publish your blog at a later date if you want. So that's helpful if 
let's say for example you have three hours today to work on your blog and you can create five blogs but you want them to be posted let's say each day for the next five days you can do that by using the scheduling feature now right here is the main body section you might want to start your blog post off with an image or a video if you want to do that go ahead and click on one of those icons and then you'll be able to choose an image that you've already uploaded to your file manager or you'll be able to upload a new image from your local computer and the same thing with a video and of course we have the image search if you want to just choose an image from the image library and you can search by color or category so on and so forth or you can connect your Facebook account and get photos into your file manager that way I'm just going to click out of that show you the basic typing so when you're ready to start sharing your story you can just type into that field if you want to format the text what you do is you highlight that text and then the formatting options will be displayed you can do bold italic you can create portions of your text as a hyperlink so if you see there I can click on that and then I can enter in the URL to whatever page I want to link to I can also link to emails and phone numbers and I can choose to check this box if I want that link to launch a new browser window I'm just going to click out of that again go back and highlight my text here you can also see that you can convert any portion of your text to an h1 tag and you can also put it in quotations and what that does is it adds this little indent so it calls out that portion of your post now if you're not ready to publish your blog post all you need to do is click the save as draft and then your blog post is saved for later here you can see the title the content this little placeholder here because I didn't uh, post an image along with my blog and then here you've got your view post and your edit post icon if I click on the edit post icon and I go back into my blog and then let's say for example I want to add an image I'm going to choose one from my image library now I've added that image I save as draft and then you see the image is associated with my post to create your next post you just go back up here and click new post over here on the left you can view your posts you can view just the published post drafts which I have one saved as draft as well as your scheduled post over here on the right you can manage your comments so you can enable or disable comments on your blog sometimes you'll get some spammers and you'll want to either disable your comments or delete those spam comments if you want to do that they'll appear here and you'll have the option to delete those you can even import an entire WordPress blog so if you've used WordPress to generate content in the past and then you want to move to a, an easier to use platform like web starts then you can import that all you need to do is click on this choose file button and then upload the exported version of your WordPress website here you can just click that to view what your blog looks like on your live website so that's how you create your blog post all that is found under the blog panel now let's move on over to the store panel when I click on the store panel and we saw a little bit of this earlier you have the ability to create your first product but one thing that you want to keep in mind with a store is that you're going to need a way to accept credit card payments online now when I clicked on that store panel web starts automatically set me up with a WePay account through Chase Payments and that account will allow me to automatically accept credit card payments so Visa, MasterCard, American Express and the rate is something around 2.9 percent and I can see those options here if I click on settings I can see that my payment processor is selected as WePay and that means that the automatic payment processor that was set up when I clicked on that store app panel uh, it, it's all set up and ready to go so there's nothing left that you need to do but if you want to use a different payment processor let's say for example you have a stripe account or an authorized.net account you can do that just go in here select the proper payment processor and then go ahead and log in to your stripe account 
or provide the authorized.net credentials. Going back over to the products tab and clicking on create your per first product, it's easy to do. Just enter your title, your product description. You click on this little plus icon to add your image for any particular product. Of course, once again, you can either upload those images, choose them from the uh, product image library. You can add multiple images to a specific product. So for example, if you wanted uh, to provide a few different images from different angles for a product, you can do that. Pretty much anything that you've seen online you can do. You can even add videos for your product. And then here's where you enter the price. So you can just enter whatever price you'd like to charge. Uh, you can choose whether or not to charge tax. You can set up your tax settings under the settings tab. Um, you can create categories. So for example, let's say you're selling t-shirts and you're also selling pants and you're also selling sunglasses. You could create a category for each and then assign particular products to each one of those categories. You can choose to enable shipping and then enter the weight of your products. You can enable or you can enter your shipping preferences under the settings tab in the shipping section. That'll allow you to choose whether you want to use UPS, ship by weight, ship by price, uh, any of the methods that you would like to uh, potentially use to ship things. So going down the list, you also have the hide product from your catalog. So that's great if you want to sell a product, but you don't want it to be displayed in your regular store catalog. Variance is a nice option. That's where you can set up different sizes. Let's say, for example, you want to also have size, color, material for a particular shirt. You can do that. You can also enter any custom value into that. So it's not limited to just size, color, and material. Inventory management, you can choose to enable or disable that. Simply displays the number of inventory on hand if you click this display stock on hand, and then it notifies you when your stock level reaches a certain amount. And you can choose whether or not you want to sell items that are out of stock. Digital delivery, if you enable that, then what you can do is you can enter the text for a digital download. Let's say that's an ebook. It could be a video, it could be software, it could be uh, a music file. Then you would uh, upload that particular file that they're going to get after checkout by clicking on this little attachment link. And then you can provide some download instructions as well. So for example, if you were selling software and they needed to unzip the file and then click on uh, the executable file, you would provide those instructions there. Over on the left here, this is where you can manage your categories once you've created those. You can create them either from the category tab or while creating a product on the fly. You can also view your orders. You can get reports. You can generate coupon codes, which is a really cool feature. So that way you can provide the people that come to your site a discount when they enter a code at checkout. And that can either be by amount or percentage and you can create that code, make it expire whenever you want, so on and so forth. Um, you can see another video on that that I've uploaded to the Web Starts YouTube channel as well. Here you can see your customers. I don't have any customers yet. You can manually add a customer here. You can even create customer logins. So that, for example, they can use their email and password to come back to your website and then not have to re-enter all their payment information. So that's great for repeat customers. We already clicked on the settings tab a couple of times. There you can see you do payment processor, taxes, and your shipping options. And then also you can switch from test mode to live mode by clicking on this toggle up here. Now to get in and edit your actual website, we covered that at the beginning just a little bit, but we didn't launch the editor. What you'll need to do is hover above that thumbnail, click on Edit Site. And then everything in Web Starts is drag and drop. So you can click on any element on the page. You can drag it. You can use these handles to resize elements. You can double click on pretty much any element in order to edit more of the property. So for example, if I wanted to change the color of that text to blue, I could do that. I can double click on this button and then I can change some things like I can 
add a little icon, for example, to that button. I can double click on this background and I can swap out this image. So if I wanted something other than these people here, I can swap out that image. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Here's the form. You can do just about anything that you've seen online with web starts and uh, designing your website is just as easy as moving elements around. You can add most elements over here on the side panel by clicking add and then choosing the type of element that you want to add. The most common, of course, would be text. And you can add text in various styles and sizes. When you're ready to save your changes, you click save and that saves and publishes your changes. You can view those by clicking on view site. And then if you want to go to a different page, you can just click on this drop down and go to another page. Now notice that my blog pages and my store pages are separated into their own category. So if I wanted to change the appearance of, let's say, the blog page where all the posts are, I would do that by going to the page called blog. And then I could open up the blog app by double clicking on the element in the center of the page. But I can also change the appearance of this blog page simply by doing things like filling the color or dragging other elements into the page. One thing I want to call attention to is that anything that's in this top section that when you click on that's highlighted in green is going to appear at the top of each page where the header is enabled. We call this section the header and that just provides some site consistency. So for example, if you go to view site and you go from the home page, the about page, the contact, everything in that header section is gonna remain the same at the top of the page. And everything here at the bottom in the footer section will remain the same as well. And that's this section. Now, in order to drag things into the header, you can just add them to the page. So for example, if I just wanted to add some text, I could just drag that into the header. It gives me a little notification that that's gonna appear at the top of every page after I save it. So here you can see that I save it. I click view site and now that text, as annoying as it is, is in the header and appears at the top of each site. If I want to remove it, I just click on it and then click delete. And then if I wanted to add something to my footer, let's say for example, this text, I would first select it and then hold the shift key and then cross over into the footer in order to attach that. If I just add an element to my page and then I try to just drag it into the footer, what it does instead is it expands the height of the page. So it creates some more space for me to work with in the body section of the page. When you've made all the changes to your website, you've created your blog, you've created your products, you're ready to go out and start promoting your URL to the rest of the world, uh, you'll want to probably upgrade to one of those paid plans and get a top level domain. And to do that, just click the add domain button and then you'll be able to easily choose a domain name just by searching for it, just like you would anywhere else on the web when you're looking to purchase a domain name. If you already have a domain name and you want to use it with your website, you can do that as well. Just click on, I already have a domain name. It will still require you to subscribe to a paid plan, but you'll be able to enter that domain name in right here, click continue, and then depending on where your domain name was originally registered, you might have to update your DNS servers at uh, that provider and we provide you instructions if you're not sure how to do that. Well, that just about covers it for this video. I uh, hope you liked everything that you saw here today. And don't forget to visit webstarts.com to create your very own free website that includes a built-in online store and blog as well. Thanks for watching.